Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles. Do you know what this is? Well, if not, you're about to find out. Alright guys, so here we have three of the five total butt kicker audio transducers. Each one of these guys can handle up to 250 watts of power. Now, these are the Sim Vibe editions, so they've had some additional things added to them, like some padding inside, so that the transducer doesn't smack into the wall violently and create a bunch of extra noise. Now, the goal of this project for a very long time has been to get all five of these mounted onto my Oboto Revolution Racing Simulator, which we've been working on making brackets for using the 3D printer to prototype. And we ran into a couple of snags, but we've worked those out, so now we're getting back on it. All right, now if you guys watched the old video, you can see these are the brackets that we came up with. A guy named John Alves, one of my followers, actually modeled these. And this is the rear bracket for the simulator, and you can see the LFE sits right on top here, just like so, and you just put a couple of bolts through it. Now you can see the transducer is mounted to it right there, and it basically goes over the little armature on the simulator and bolts to that also. Well, we found this design to be kind of inefficient because one, it puts the transducer out over the side instead of directly over the bar. And we want the most of that vibration to go into the bar on, this, on the simulator. So that was the problem that we had with the front mount. All right, so here we have the rear mount bracket. And again, this one just goes on and this bolts into place. And you see the transducer just sits there and then this bolts up under the edge of the chair on the back of the simulator and, and holds the transducer. The problem with this one is it had to be printed in two separate pieces and glued together. And plus, it puts the transducer way out away from the simulator and we want to get those vibrations into the frame. So we want it to be as rigid as possible. Now, ultimately, we're just doing this stuff to prototype, but still, it's better to prototype in cheap plastic before going and spending a bunch of machine, uh, machine time, building them out of aluminum or steel, uh, just to find all that time wasted. All right, guys, so here is the new designed front bracket that John made me that puts the transducer right over the rail on the frame of the Bodo Revolution. So this one is going to be a lot easier to print for one, and it should be a lot stronger and transfer a lot more vibration than the first design. All right, here's the redesigned rear bracket. You can see this is a much more sophisticated bracket than the front ones because we had to contend with a couple of problems. And that was we had to make sure that it didn't interfere with the movement of the seat and the overhang of the seat. And we still needed it strong enough to transfer that vibration into the frame efficiently. So you can see the design that John came up with here was to use a bunch of vertical slats here in the back to strengthen it. But not only that, but he also put slats right here so that you can bolt the transducer in the back as well as the bottom so that the transducer casing itself becomes a structural element here. So let's go ahead and get this thing printed out and then we'll see if they fit.
right, so here we have the two brackets fresh off the printer. Now, one of the problems with printing and uh, 3D printing is when you have overhangs, you have to print the stuff called support material. You can see this piece right here is just a honeycomb pattern, and it fits into place, and sometimes it's hard to remove. You can see I completely screwed it up on that side, and it's basically just all butchered and little pieces of plastic coming off. So in this case, you have to remove the support material, and I found with this, it's best to just use bat knife. No, 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 bat knife, bat knife, woo! And you just shove it in there, and just kind of twist it a little bit until that sucker pops off. All right, well, you can see I fudged that up. So the only two that came out clean were the inside pieces. The outside pieces did not. Now here's the part where I get to make a huge mess. <laughs> I'm going to be cleaning up plastic for days. Cleaning up. Here's the final product. We removed most of the support material. It's still pretty rough. Now, I'm going to be using a program in the future called uh, Mesh Mix that's actually gonna allow me to build better support material that's easier to remove because this is, this is one of the biggest hassles of 3D printing is removing support material. Now you'll notice on the newly designed bracket, he's utilizing the back as well as the front to actually make the butt kicker a structural part of the bracket, which I think is really cool. So let's go ahead and drop a couple screws in there. All right, since we're just test fitting, I went ahead and put two screws in there and you can see the brackets on the back actually do line up. So now I can put some screws through there also. And that's going to create just a really, really nice, strong structure, especially when I have this made in metal. All right, let's mount up the other one. Now, I love this bracket because the redesign makes it really, really small, a lot less material, and puts the transducer right over the business. So let's go ahead and set this guy on here and bolt it down. I picked up all my hardware from a little hardware store down the street. All right, now we have this guy bolted down. You can see the little bolts and nuts underneath here holding it all together. Now we have both style mounts. This is gonna be in three because one is gonna go under the seat, two in the back, and then this one, two in the front. So let's go ahead and test fit them to the simulator and see if they clear everything. And if it looks good, we're gonna send them off and get them done in metal. All right guys, here you have my Oboto Revolution simulator. This is what we're gonna put the transducers on. And you can already see there in the front, I have one transducer mounted with the old style bracket. So let's see how the new brackets fit. All right, so here we have the rear bracket. We're gonna go ahead and mount it and see how well it fits on the simulator. Now, the cool thing about this bracket is it was designed to serve the purpose of both the back bracket and under the front of the seat, which in the previous model, I didn't show you guys earlier in the video, but this is the bracket that was designed just to hold the transducer in the front here, and now this serves both purposes. So now we only have two brackets instead of three. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and hold it up here and feed some bolts through. Now, one cool thing to mention is that these brackets were designed by a guy that was completely somewhere else on earth. I just sent him pictures with a ruler next to it showing measurements and things like that. And he was able to build these brackets and they actually printed and fit. It took very little finagling to get everything lined up just right. Now, as you can see, that fits perfectly. Now, when this is a piece of metal and these are strapped in here, this is gonna transfer vibration so efficiently to the frame, it's gonna be awesome. All right, so now we know this fits on the back of the simulator. Let's test it on the front in front of the chair here. So let's go ahead and feed it through, put some bolts in. It fits like a glove. So when that part's metal, this is gonna work fantastic. So that one bracket design that John came up with makes this a part of the bracket, a structural part of the bracket, and bolts at the frame. The honest truth is, I think I could run these transducers just on the plastic brackets, but I'm not going to because the metal is gonna be so much more effective. All right, you can see I have the old style mount right here on the front, just like I showed you earlier that has it on there, but it hangs out over the side, which I thought was a good thing originally, but to get the most force, you want it right over the beam. So here we have the new one. Let's see how it fits. Let's line it up with the holes. Feeds right through. Now, ultimately, I am gonna move it up one spot because I want it more towards the front uh, for the vibration, but I'll have to clip that away later to do that. I'm gonna wait until I have the metal ones. So you can see right there, with this bolted down, it's just finger tight right now, Other, it, otherwise it would be a lot more rigid. But it does fit, it clears the pedals. The pedals have plenty of room, they can move up and down. So John got really, really close, but that's a perfect fit. Now all I need to do is get these bad boys sent off and made out of metal. Well, there you have it, guys. Those are the two new brackets that I'm gonna be using. They fit beautifully. Thank you, John. I really appreciate it, all the work that you put in on this project. I'm sorry it's taken so long, 
for me to get to this point, but we've now settled on two brackets that we've printed. This is another excellent demonstration of 3D printing. A desktop 3D printer, not only can it be used for, being, for making just ready to use stuff, it can be used for prototyping because it's really cheap to just print out a plastic part and throw it away if it doesn't fit. So now that we know that we have the dimensions right, everything fits, everything's strong, now I'm gonna send it off to another guy to have these made out of metal. And when they get back, we're gonna go ahead and finish up this video series by attaching them to the simulator and ultimately turning some laps in eye racing using Sim Vibe with five separate 250 watt audio transducers. It's gonna be awesome. All right guys, be sure to check out some of my other videos on my channel. I have full videos based just on the simulator, just on the Butt Kicker Gamer 2 LFE, a lot of iRacing videos. I'm kind of bad though, so be prepared to uh, knock me down a couple pegs in the comments. All right, it's been fun guys. Till next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.